This is the 2014 Mechanics Level 2 paper, question number one. Uh, we have basketball. <coughs> Rachel is on her way to basketball practice. Uh, her, mass, her ball has a mass of 0 0.60 kilograms, that's 600 grams. Rachel drops the ball from a balcony. Let's just start sketching it now. Here's a balcony, rail. Rachel drops the ball. Okay, from a balcony it takes 1.2 seconds, so that's our time to reach the ground. Calculate the size of the impulse on the ball during the time it takes to fall. Excuse me, so uh, our change in momentum is our impulse equals F times the change in time. Um, F equals mg, g being 9.81 meters per second squared, uh, m being this that you've been given here, the mass of the ball. So it's 9.81, so you've got the force. The time was given to you there, and so you just plug those numbers in and do that calculation. B, is the momentum of the ball conserved as it falls? And the answer is no. It's increasing in speed. Um, so V increases, even though mass stays the same. So P, P equals MV, P must increase as well. And so you need to not just say no, which is the answer to the first part here. The second part, you have to explain your answer. And you explain it with reference to conditions required for momentum conservation. And the answer there is that there is an external force acting, which is gravity. There is an external force. So momentum is conserved if there are no um, external forces or torques acting on the system. Uh, C. Uh, Rachel throws the ball so it has a vertical component of velocity of uh, 9.0 metres per second and a horizontal component of the velocity 12 metres per second as shown in the diagram below. There's our, there's our diagram there. So the ball's going um, up on, on this sort of an angle um, and it's got 9 upwards and 12 to the right. Uh, it's really annoying having that picture on one page and then on the second. But anyway, state the size of the vertical component of the um, velocity and the horizontal component when the ball reaches the highest point. Okay, that's actually got nothing to do with uh, um, some of it anyway. The vertical component has nothing to do with there. But vertical component of the velocity must be zero metres per second. Explanation. Gravity is acting vertically. Vertically vertically down, um, and uh, this is the only force, because we're ignoring air resistance, the only force, um, and once it reaches the top, uh, you know, a symmetrical arc reaches the top, vertical velocity is zero and it starts increasing its downward uh, speed, speed as opposed to velocity vector um, scalar, go back and have a listen to that and ponder it if you're not sure. Horizontal component, um, in the absence of air resistance, will remain unchanged. Um, so my terrible scrawl. Um, going back up here, that was 12 uh, metres per second, so it's going to remain at 12 metres per second. Um, so it's 12 metres per second. And again, the explanation, there are no forces acting in a horizontal um, no unbalanced force, I should say, unbalanced. In fact, there's none in this ideal situation with no air resistance. Uh, no unbalanced force in a horizontal direction. Okay, D, when the ball is compressed, it acts like a, a spring with a spring constant of 1,200 newton, uh, newtons per metre. So let's just write that as K for our spring constant. When Rachel throws the ball at the wall, the ball compresses a distance of 900 millimetres. We're talking about springs, so that would be our x um, if we're using f equals kx, uh, or minus kx, because remember the restoring force is in the opposite direction to the, um, to the um, compression or extension. The ball has a mass of 0 0.60 kilograms, still the same ball. Calculate the elastic potential energy stored in the ball when it's momentarily stationary against the wall. So that's just the formula, um, Ep equals half kx squared. You can, you've got x given to you, um, you've got k given to you, and you can just plug those numbers and calculate it. Your units will be in joules, capital J. The maximum possible rebound speed then would be if all of that elastic potential energy is converted to 
kinetic energy. So we have to take that figure, that half kx squared, and uh, use it in the kinetic energy formula, half mv squared. We rearrange for v, which is going to be, I'll just give you the v squared part and then you can square it at all. The halves are going to cancel out. Um, so it's going to v, be uh, kx squared over m, and then you're going to square root the whole thing. Um, you can, uh, yeah, just plug those numbers in and do it. Um, any assumptions you make, I think this is the last part, so yep, assumptions. Um, we're assuming that, um, let's see, uh, all, all energy is converted. So that's a um, elastic collision um, is another way of saying that. That's probably the major, the major situation uh, um, assumption. You can make a whole bunch of other assumptions that there's a um, that the ball actually does act as a spring, so that it's a consistent change in length for the force. Um, and then um, you can safely assume that your say your graph of um, uh, uh, force against extension is going to be a straight line. Um, or you could put these equally the other way around, but and if it's a straight line, um, the area under the graph is the, um, the work done, the amount of energy, and then you can take all of that energy across. Anyway, that's good enough, I think.